Shalom, welcome to the Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabad House of Delmar and together with my co-host Mark Ronich, who's been covering the Capitol for over 30 years. And I've been having a lot of fun doing it and uh, you know I've met a lot of uh, legislators along the way and one of our guests here is someone who I've become very good friends with is Assemblyman David Weprin. Uh, we knew, you know, I, I really liked the fact you were an alum, a UAlbany alumni, but welcome back to The Jewish View. Thank you, Mark. Uh, always a pleasure to be here and always a pleasure to be with you, Rabbi. And right. uh, just, uh, I've been around so long, I even knew your father when he was the <laughs> assembly speaker. <laughs> it's been so long, he's trying to know his grandfather over here, right? <laughs> and, so, and your brother Mark tells really? me that he was running around in the assembly chamber while your father was speaker. <laughs> right, but he actually is also an Albany, uh, SUNY Albany alum yes. as well. Yeah, he, he tells me I can now publicly say that he was the uh, UAlbany mascot. He was in that. Uh, outfit. Really? Yeah, <laughs> he just didn't want anyone to know you that. Have to now he said, "Go to college to be the mascot over here." But okay. you know, David, Dad, you're probably one of the biggest uh, advocates of the Jewish community, uh, Jewish members of the assembly, and of course, you care about all the people. I know that. But on the other hand, there have been a few things he have been an advocate for the Jewish community, and one of them is the kosher halal food. Why don't you tell us about that? Yeah, you know, absolutely. Um, you know, with, it, it's a problem in the Muslim community, but it's becoming a, an increasing problem in the uh, Orthodox Jewish community too, because although most uh, Orthodox Jews send their kids uh, to yeshivas, uh, there's a large Bukharian Jewish population who are uh, observant, uh, but generally send their kids to the public school and have uh, religious training uh, out of school. Uh, and everywhere, every time I go to speak in one of my schools that has a Bukharian population, there are always a, a lot of yarmulkes uh, mm -hmm. in the audience, and they're mostly the Bukharian Jewish children, and they don't they have a problem because they have uh, a free lunch program in uh, in the schools, and uh, you know they have tr they have trouble. They can bring their own lunch, but uh, you know then they feel they're you know they're not getting you know a hot meal. And they don't have, um, you know, that kosher option available. So and I think so, it'd be very important to the yeah. Bukharian Jewish community. And I, I think uh, someone had said to me, "Well, what are they going to do? Have a mishkiach on set?" But it's the airline food. It it's would be prepared, prepackaged pre meals. But yeah. it, you know, at least it's a hot uh, exactly. alternative, uh, yeah. and it shouldn't be a costly thing, and it should be on request of any student. Now, are you lo uh, last year you had a Senate sponsor? Do you have a Senate sponsor this year? Um, I because I, I think Senator Peralta, oh, Tony Avella, rather, I think he dropped it. Yeah, I'm not sure. We uh, if we don't have a Senate sponsor, we'll we'll get one. All right, because I looked it up, I didn't see one, but that doesn't mean it's not there. So I just wasn't sure if. Well, we got a lot of bills we're negotiating you between now and the uh, end of session. So no, uh, you, you sometimes do. these things come together at the last minute. Okay, well, hopefully this will too. Is the city uh, the, is the city supporting this, or are they? Well, opposing I'm not it? sure they're opposing it. Uh, you know, certainly if if we don't require like a separate kitchen. And uh, we, we do say it's upon request. I think it's, it's manageable, it's reasonable. You know, I think it's something that uh, we can, you know, get yeah. the city to go along with. Yeah, D D Dove Hyken had said to me that, um, you know, he says, I wouldn't oppose it, but it's not one of my top priorities. <laughs> I mean, that's, you know, he says, I can't oppose it, you know, because, right. you know, so is he to? someone, I mean, are you getting that type of, Lukewarm support, well, as, you, you know, a lot of people in the Orthodox Jewish community figure most of the kids uh, go to yeshivas, but uh, increasingly more, and especially as I mentioned in the Bukharian Jewish community, which we have a large uh, yeah. community Where do they in live? Queens. In Queens, they live in my area, Jamaica States. Uh, you know, well, um, Andrew Hevesy has a big Bukharian, Forest Hills. Yeah, yes, Forest Hills. There's, there's, yeah. there's a, all over Queens now. So I, but they don't uh, send their kids. To private schools, they specifically want well, uh, public schools. I don't most know. Of them, a lot of them send the kids to public schools, and then they have you know religious training after afterwards, school. like I had. Okay, like a Talmud Torah thing. Yeah. You know, another uh, second idea would be the religious attire. You know, should be non-discriminatory. So tell us about and that's that. A yeah, bill you I, can, I have a bill yeah. that's passed uh, the last uh, three or four years uh, in the assembly. Unfortunately, hasn't passed yet in the Senate. Um, uh, Tony Avell actually has that bill uh, in the Senate. It would prohibit um, discrimination uh, in all employment in New York State, whether it be public or private employment, uh, based on uh, religious attire or facial hair for religious reasons. And of course, uh, we know Hasidic Jews, uh, you know, are uh, you know 
more Haredi Jews will ha- could often have long beards, like the rabbi over here, <laughs> mm-hmm. and they shouldn't be discriminated not only uh, in hiring but uh, promotion uh, as as well. And um, it's also actually an important bill to the um, to the Muslim community because of Muslim women are often discriminated with hijabs uh, in employment uh, and uh, Sikh uh, Sikhs who uh, are of Indian descent who uh, wear beards and turbans. And they're often uh, not hired or not promoted uh, because of uh, their beards and turbans. So uh, I don't think anyone uh, in this day and age should have to choose between observing their religion the way they see fit uh, and supporting their families and their employment. And, you know, I'll tell you that this, is, this seems so strange that it has to be legislated, that it's just not common sense as a societal norm that, you know, really has to be legislated. Well, there was a situation uh, of a Sikh um, operator of a train uh, who was actually a hero during 9-11, which prompted this. He was actually a born, born a Roman Catholic, uh, uh, Irish Catholic, Catholic uh, uh, Kevin Harrington. He converted to Sikhism uh, many years ago. He has a long beard and turban. And he was actually uh, an operator of the train at the front of the train, uh, you know, the, uh, the motor man at the front uh, for many years. And no one complained. He had a beard and a turban. And then all of a sudden, after 9-11, uh, people complained uh, that there was a terrorist driving the train, <laughs> and the MTA uh, removed him from his position uh, as operating the train. Mm-hmm. And ironically, he was actually a hero during 9-11 because uh, Kevin Harrington drove the E-train, which went into the World Trade Center. And during 9-11, while the buildings were burning, he actually rescued people dr- driving backwards on the train uh, to get people out of the uh, Trade Center area with his train. And was he already converted to Sikhism at the yeah, time? Yeah, he's yeah. been a Sikh for you know, over 30 years. Now, so. your district is a, a mosaic of every type of nationality. I mean, you know, I see you at all these uh, and heritage and nationality uh, events at ethnic events at the uh, capital, right. I mean, right? I mean, you do have a lot of uh, different nationalities in your district. We have a very it's diverse not, district. We have yeah. uh, a very large South Asian population. We, have, as I mentioned, we have a large, we have the largest Sikh temple in Richmond Hill in my district. Uh, Nine thousand members of that temple. Uh, they don't all walk to shul. They, uh, <laughs> they, they can drive, but uh, it's a Sunday service. But uh, nine thousand members. Uh, we also have the, uh, the largest mosque in New York City, uh, which is the Bangladeshi Mosque at the Jamaica Muslim Center, right by Jamaica High School, and they have 6,000 members. And then, of course, we have a lot of uh, Sephardic shuls and a lot of, uh, you know, Ashkenaz shuls, so we, uh, we have a, a multi-ethnic, uh, you know, community. Uh, most of the Muslim community in my district are of Bangladeshi descent, uh, which was at one mm-hmm. point part of India, but broke off and, uh, you know, um, they're all here in, in Queens and uh, living together and uh, getting along with each other. Do you have any Guyanese in your district? We have a large Guyanese population, also in Richmond Hill. The reason I ask is because the former mayor of Schenectady, Al Jasinski, w- went down to Queens to bring a lot of the Guyanese up. Now there's a large population in Schenectady, and he took them from Queens and also Guyana. I actually marched in a parade <laughs> with him Oh, okay. Uh, okay. You know, in, in Richmond Hill. We have the uh, Pagua <laughs> Parade. Uh, which is celebrating, uh, you know, the uh, festival of colors, uh, the holy festival, and uh, it's a guy, guy in, heavily Guyanese yeah. uh, tradition. Oh, that's good. I'm glad we made that connection. Yes. That's good. <laughs> um, what now? Y- your committee assignments have changed over the over, from last year to this year. You know. Well, I became mm-hmm. when I became chairman of corrections. Uh, you know, I. I uh, Gave up a committee. I, I gave up election law, but I, mm-hmm. I, I kept all the other committees. Okay. And but I used to chair the task force on people with disabilities. And mm-hmm. actually, today is Disability Awareness Day. Oh. Wow. And I did participate in the uh, the opening ceremonies we had uh, this morning in the Yellow Bee. Well, I'm honored you found time for us too. So thank you. And very uh, much. and we also have a couple of bills on the agenda today uh, for the disability community that that I'm still sponsoring. Okay. Well, we'll let you go. Yeah, I did <laughs> take there. on a new assignment this yeah. year, though. On the Jewish side, I'm now co-president of the National Association of Jewish Legislators, which are yes, uh, national, not national, national, not New York. Yeah. Uh, I'm, you know, active in the New York chapter uh, that Chuck Levine chairs, but I'm actually co-president of the national chapter, uh, and we meet at uh, all the uh, we get as many Jewish legislators from across the country together uh, during. Um, National Conference of State Legislators conferences and, and, and regional conferences. We actually just had a, a board meeting phone call last night uh, on the phone 
uh, and we're trying to do uh, you know, more Jewish outreach, getting uh, more people, encouraging more Jew Jews to run for office and uh, to run for higher office. Uh, we've, we've actually worked together on anti-BDS legislation in many states. Uh, I know um, there are some uh, issues now occurring uh, in, in Florida with uh, separation of church and state issues mm -hmm. about uh, mandating prayer in schools, and that's an issue in Florida uh, for many people in the Jewish community, and uh, that the, uh, most of the prayers that they would be having would be uh, Christian-based uh, prayers. And we want to, uh, you know, make sure that people know that they have to be inclusive, that there are many different religions and we can't, uh, you know, have uh, religious uh, prayers of one particular religion, you know, in the schools. And yeah. you Democrats and Republicans work together? I don't know how many Republicans. Yeah, well, it was a bipartisan. Yeah, yeah the, um, very the National yeah. Association of Jewish Legislators uh, is a bipartisan group. Uh, as I mentioned, it's a 50-state uh, group, Democrat and Republican. My co-chair is a Democrat, but she's the only Democrat a, a Jew, only Jewish member of the uh, Utah legislature, <laughs> uh, Patrice Rent, uh, is uh, co-chair with co-president with me, and she's in the uh, Utah legislature. And the predominant religion in that legislature is Mormon, Mormon mm. uh, and they're very big supporters of Israel. So she she has a real ally in the Mormon community, uh, you know, against the BDS movement uh, in favor of. Uh, strong support well, for the state of Israel. Well, also the Mormons uh, during World War II rescued a lot of the uh, documents, historic documents, birth certificates, death certificates, you know, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, when you went on a ship, the manifests, and they have them underneath the tabernacle, and now they're uh, scanning them in and they're digitizing a lot of that. But they were very, you know, they were very much into uh, ancestry. And I wouldn't be surprised if they started Ancestry.com, but, <laughs> but anyway, that's their con a big connection with the Jewish community. Right. And uh, I did want to, uh, I mean, R the, Rabbi Simon's famous for saying that he is a prison chaplain uh, and you're head of corrections, chair of corrections, so right. I think there's... Uh, we have a private meeting together. Yeah. <laughs> Rabbi Simon, where are you um, uh, well, chaplain? Which well, it's the, the, the Albany Hub, which is Green, Kuksaki, and Hudson. And then I go up to the Great Meadows, and um, they, uh, McGregor was closed up. They're trying to consolidate, you know, save money to say the least. But and they uh, transferred the 16 and 17 year olds to Hudson, in yeah, a separate uh, yeah, unit, I guess, at Hudson. Well. Yeah, because they're youth offenders. That's the new idea behind that. And I almost say, thank God, you know, you know, everybody wants to gain members like the new members. And I'm always looking. I say, thank God, you're leaving. Goodbye. You know, have a good life. I mean, I try to tell them to have a good life, you know, a decent, upright life. But um, so thank God, right now there's no youth offenders, 16, 17 year olds that are there. Oh, really? That's yeah, it's, there's no Jewish kids there. Oh, yeah. Jewish, Jew kids. <laughs> Jewish kids. Jewish oh. kids. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jewish kids. It's places packed with everybody else. So were you in favor of the uh, uh, Raise the Age? Oh, absolutely, yeah. yes. Uh, I was a strong supporter. It was obviously uh, went along with some of the reforms that we've been trying to do in the criminal justice system. You know, as 16 and 17 year olds, um, you know, uh, intellectually, minds are not fully developed. Uh, you know, we've had uh, medical testimony to that effect that, uh, you know, the brain is still evolving at that age and, uh, you know, it would not be fair to treat uh, 16 and 17 year olds uh, you know, um, as adults in the criminal justice system. But just keep in mind, this was really all for nonviolent felonies right. and misdemeanors. And it's so, phased in. And it's phased in. Right. But so uh, we're not talking about, you know, mass murderers uh, who happen to be 16 or 17. We're talking about, you know, lower level nonviolent crimes, a lot of drug crimes and so, others at 16 and 17. And where would they be put? Is it still Hudson or is it Well, they are being put in Hudson, but now, they, they, they but were talking about uh, now being... Uh, under the um, you know uh, youth youth department under uh, uh, family <coughs> court. children family, family services children family services which used to be the division for youth division and, yeah, for right. youth correct uh, so say so they would be under that jurisdiction okay so they wouldn't be it so would be a separate facility so for what uh, about these kids the non Jewish kids who are in Hudson uh, who are sixteen and seventeen year olds uh, are they going to be Again, transferred or uh, they would probably be transferred if they're still 16 and 17. A lot of them may age out on their own, but uh, yeah. yeah, I would think that or new kids coming in, in particular, new kids would, on would the block, the, new the cell block. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's a group, a, a music group, new kids on the block. Okay, right. okay. Um, 
And anti-BDS legislation uh, doesn't seem to be anything coming out of the assembly uh, on Well, that, you know, we did, the governor did a very strong executive resolution. order, which had uh, executive yeah. order, yeah. which had teeth, which actually prohibited New York State uh, from doing business, um, you know, with companies that uh, that supported the BDS movement. And that's uh, I think it's the important thing would be the enforcement of that executive order, but is which that has the weight of law. Okay, so there doesn't need to be anything going through the assembly and the Senate. Uh, there's, I mean, there's, there's no harm in doing it, but uh, but there is a, a very strong uh, anti-BDS uh, executive order in New York State, which is, uh, for all practical purposes, you know, the law of the land at this point. Well, be, well, at this point, then when this governor leaves eventually, you mm -hmm. know, then there's another governor that could do away with that. So, but if you have it in law. It's not. It's really highly unlikely that it would be repealed, and well, that's why yeah, we, I was wondering. We may you know. revisit it, but uh, with the executive order, there's less pressure uh, to get it done. Uh, you know now. Well, Dove Hyken's upset that there's no there's no real legislation being debated. Well, I would you, certainly support yeah. the legislation, but again, <laughs> you know, there are always um, people raise you know you know constitutional issues and and what have you. Uh, so it you know it's got to be you know. So how does it get passed in the other states' legislatures? You mentioned that there's anti-BDS well, the, legislation. Most of, them, most so. of the legislation passed is, is more, uh, you know, symbolic and, and less, has less teeth than the executive order that uh, the governor, okay. you know, put into place. It's good for the people to know, you know, yeah. that that's the case. You know, Mark, you know, Mark because, I want to talk sure, about sure, it go. because you have legislation that an adopted child should know their background. So I want you to talk about, but I also have... Incredible, uh, you know, heart rendering stories. Because it's very nice to keep the parents not known. But on one birth certificate, and he showed me that he was raised by his adoptive parents who were Jewish, and it says his birth parents were Jewish. So I went to, you know, bigger rabbis. I'm, I'm a local rabbi, and they said, well, we have to know who they are. We can't just go by some certificates or Jewish, you know, people just put down they're Jewish. So I went to, to people that contact that I know. And they just know it's absolutely not allowed. It says, I, I'll, I'll check it out. I don't even have to tell them. Absolutely not. You cannot. And, um, f you know, he's in flux because of that. But tell me your, you know, situation is also. Yeah, the, um, all um, birth certificates are sealed, um, you know, uh, when the adoption takes place. And uh, the original birth certificate, which has the birth parents on it, uh, is, is still being held uh, at the Department of Health, but it's sealed, and no one can have access to it, including the adoptee themselves, or even the, uh, the birth parents or the adopted parents don't have access to it as well. It's not just uh, the adoptee that doesn't have access to it. So it seems you know, unjust, unfair in this day and age, especially when you have the Internet, when anybody that really wants to try to find out who their birth parents are, if they have money, they can hire private detectives, they can use the Internet, and they can find him, but uh, it really seems um, unfair. It's almost like a, it's really a human rights issue. Why should somebody that happens to be adopted in New York State have less rights uh, to having that piece of paper, which is their original birth certificate, as opposed to somebody that wasn't adopted? It doesn't seem, it doesn't seem fair, and the reasons behind it uh, no, no longer really apply. Years ago, uh, they adopted this in, in this state and many other states, and it's changing in quite a few states. Uh, I think there are probably about 15 or 16 states that have uh, already allowed access uh, to the original birth certificate. But the original reason was yes. the stigma, stigma to giving up a child, uh, you know, uh, for adoption. It was often uh, unwed mothers, uh, teenage mothers, that gave up the children, and there was a certain shame involved in that. Uh, and they didn't want their, you know, name revealed, and that's why it was sealed to protect the birth parents. But uh, I don't think that's really necessarily relevant anymore. Um, and, uh, you know, I think it's, it's uh, human rights that, uh, and also just the knowledge, you know, just knowing for religious reasons who your uh, parents are, what their religion were, and also for medical reasons. Mm, you know, to know, to know what the medical mm. history is. If, if someone who's adopted has a medical emergency and they have to go to an emergency room, uh, the first question they'll ask you is, what's your medical history? Do you have any history of cancer? Do you have any history of heart mm. disease? Do you have a history of strokes? And you have no way of knowing that if you don't know who your birth parents are. Now, you had a story that you were telling us about that, uh, you know, that led to this, uh, 
a brother and sister didn't who were twins. Well, it didn't lead didn't, to that. I just no. read about it in the media, yeah. you know, uh, recently us, yeah. that that, tell, that occurred. Tell no, us that uh, there are there are situations where if you don't know who your birth parents are, and, and in this case, it was a a pair of uh, twins that uh, were adopted by two separate families, and uh, you know, given different names, and they didn't know that there was a twin brother or sister, and uh, you know, they lived their separate lives, and. Uh, uh, ironically, they ended up uh, marrying. So uh, obviously, and then they found out later that they were actually, uh, you know, brother and sister. Brother and sister. That's just so amazing. Out of all the people in this world, and that these two people who were twins get attracted to each other like that. I mean, it does show that they that twins do share a soul. Right. And that's, brothers and sisters, any siblings, you would, yeah. you know, you like them. That you're the same. You know, kind of and all of, of a mind. sudden, you know, there's this. Uh, appeal that you don't find amongst anyone else. I mean, there are twins who can finish each other's sentences. Right. <laughs> so. Well, I have tw I'm a father of twins. I have boy and girl twins. Oh, yeah. Wow. They're both uh, 25 now. So, w have you seen that with them? I mean, as they were growing up, that they really could, like, one person, one of them gets hurt, the other one feels it, or something like that? Or? They're very close. They were very close growing <laughs> up, and, and they're still very close. Yeah, okay. All right. Um, now, have you seen enthusiasm at Jewish functions around the capital change over the past couple of years? Have you seen it diminish at all or anything? Not or? really. We had uh, Rabbi Butman here um, earlier this year, uh, you know, celebrating yeah. uh, Lubavitcher Rebbe's uh, birthday, and we had uh, a lot of members uh, participating. And uh, he actually, because of the day, we hadn't, we were still finalizing. Uh, the budget, so there was some last minute stuff and it kind of delayed things a little bit. Uh, but um, but he, we had a lot of still... members interested. You know, we had uh, we had a little luncheon before, but then he was on the uh, rostrum, he gave the invocation, he had the uh, the pushka, uh -huh. you know, uh, on, on, and members, Jewish and non Jewish, kept coming over. Right. They were lining up to uh, put money in the pushka to say hello. So uh, I, I don't think so. I think it's still. Uh, Quite a few uh, functions going on, and then when we had the to uh, Bishvat, to Bishvat yeah. but we also had the um, uh, the prince. Um, oh yeah, prince and princess of um, Albania. 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 Yeah, and uh, we had a, a Jewish community reception. A lot of people came to yeah. that uh, kosher reception, mm -hmm. uh, talking about uh, how um, the king of Albania, the uh, current prince's grandfather, uh, was very instrumental in saving Jews during the Holocaust. Right. Uh, and uh, that's a part of history that uh, not everybody knows about. And uh, that was one of the things that uh, we discussed. You were at that yeah. uh, ceremony. So, Had a great uh, time. Yeah. You know, I think uh, we celebrate many, many different uh, celebrations, different uh, religions. We have a, a Haitian day today, Haitian right. Unity Day today. Oh, no, as well. there's all this. Uh, I mean, I've, I've learned so many about so many different cultures being at the Capitol, but we don't have any celebration. I mean, we've never had any celebration about a. Uh, anything you know, Jewish culture, not Jewish religion, but Jewish culture, and I found that I've always been, you know, pestering people that why don't we, you know, <laughs> you you know, I think you do have a well, we do Israeli. Have, well, we did have we did celebrate uh, Israel coming. Independence Day, uh, Yom Hatzmaut, uh, in in the uh, assembly just a couple of weeks ago, and we had uh, the Consul General in New York, uh, Danny Dayan. Uh, was here for that, and we had a little ceremony on the floor. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a resolution. We introduced him mm -hmm. on the floor. I got to get on the I got to get on that list of notifications. So we did have that a couple of weeks, <laughs> okay. a couple of weeks ago. Okay. And then right. we also had a luncheon for him uh, right. in one of the rooms they had, uh, you know, before session. Okay. So we, you know, we and we, every member was invited. So it wasn't just Jewish members. A lot of non-Jews came. As sure, well. because a lot of non-Jewish members represent Jewish communities that used to be represented by Jewish legislators. <laughs> so it's, I just in wanted, many cases, yeah. Yeah. Um, so when you were the, when you were in the com city council, New York City Council, you were chair of finance. Correct. So you know all about writing budgets and doing the hearings, and you know it's just on the state level, it's a lot bigger. <laughs> right. Um, the chairman of the Ways and Means Committee is retiring, Denny Farrell. The Ways and Means Committee writes is well, the budget writing I think committee. He's not running for re-election next year, so he's still he's still got a ways. You know, he's still going to be in uh, through one seventeen more, and through one eighteen. One more budget. One more budget yeah, cycle. Through eighteen, right? Right. So you think he's going to be grooming someone to sit through that grueling, uh, all those hearings and 
it's a grueling position. Well, I've been on Ways and Means for a number of years. Yeah. It's certainly something that I enjoy. I enjoy uh, the committee activity, attending the hearings, uh, you know, so I do uh, actively uh, participate. But, it, you know, that's the speaker's decision, uh, you know, and uh, there are a lot of senior members. I'm sure that would be interested in, uh, in that committee as well. So uh, I'll be t if I was offered it, I'd be happy to serve. I'd, uh, I'd be thrilled. But, uh, again, there are a lot of members that are more senior than I am. I'm actually very happy to chair the Corrections Committee. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a l l huge responsibility. We have uh, 54 correctional uh, institutions in New York State, uh, as well as many, many local jails, including Rikers Island, which is the largest right. jail. Uh, I'm committed to holding hearings on the whole Rikers Island plan. Do you favor closing it? Well, not yet. Not uh, yet. You're like, listening. I'm listening. <laughs> I read the report. I'm still not convinced. Uh, the report uh, basically required uh, five separate uh, jail facilities uh, once the population is reduced almost in half. Right mm -hmm. now we're down to about 9,500 inmates at Rikers. Uh, the plan is once it's reduced to 5,000 inmates, which should take place uh, over the next 10 years, uh, that they would divide those 5,000 inmates among the five boroughs. And the idea would be to have them close to the court facilities, because Rikers, as you know, is only supposed to be uh, for pretrial uh, detainees and uh, you know people that are waiting trial. So the idea would be the you know, transport them to uh, courts quickly. But the real problem, I think, is in the criminal justice system, is in the uh, court parts, not having enough judges, not mm -hmm. having enough court personnel, mm -hmm. not, not moving the arraignments and uh, court hearings uh, through quicker. And there's no reason why somebody who has, uh, you know, not been convicted of a crime should spend any more than, you know, a matter of weeks uh, in detention. And in a lot of these case, minor cases, a lot of it is they can't make bail. There's a five thousand dollar bail or a ten thousand right. dollar bail, and a lot of poor families uh, can't afford it. Uh, you know, then I think we, the state, should provide in those cases. You know, of course, we have the the famous case of uh, Caliph Browder, uh, which got all the publicity. Um, you know, which uh, basically uh, he was uh, in Rikers uh, for two years for stealing a backpack, uh, couldn't afford the the bail. So he was uh, in trial, and then he was acquitted after after being in Rikers for two years, and then committed suicide. That's the case that is kind of the poster child for reform at Rikers. But a lot of it is not Rikers per se, as much as you know the whole court system and expediting uh, trials and. Uh, and and you say the whole court system, so including upstate, because upstate there's an issue with approving with the judges approving gun permits pistol permits, and they're so busy with other cases and, de and triaging that they don't get to these pistol permits very quickly, especially in Albany County. So that was another issue that maybe New York City doesn't have, issues. but upstate But I've, you know, I've spoken to uh, Senator Pat Gallivan from Buffalo, who chairs the Senate Committee on Corrections, right. and uh, he, uh, he'd like to have hearings with me uh, on the whole Rikers Island plan. So I think we'll hear from all the players, and uh, okay. you know, I'm not convinced that uh, closing Rikers is the answer, but it's certainly something that, you know, I would be open-minded to, uh, you know, and that should all come out in a public hearing. One quick thing, are you sponsoring the bill for mayoral control of New York, uh, the schools? Uh, not mayoral control of the schools. I do have a bill uh, that the mayor okay. has been pushing that's going to be on the floor in the next week or two that passed out of uh, two committees already uh, to have body scanners at Rikers. Uh, or no, no, not Rikers. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about mayoral control of schools. Are yeah, I'm supporting it. I support it. You uh, support that. Yeah, we, uh, we don't, the, the Senate is the one that's, uh, you know, trying to link it to charter schools. I don't, I think it should be two separate issues. Okay. I don't think it should be linked. All right. And uh, you, are you still into the cameras in the courtroom? Uh, are you still pushing that? I am. I don't know, you know, certain years there was more momentum than, than other years. I know the chair of the Judiciary Committee is opposed to it, uh, so she's against it, uh, okay. Lee Weinstein. So there, that goes that one. No wonder she won't come on the show in front of a camera. No, I'm just <laughs> joking, just joking, Helene. No. And what is this uh, bill that I see it includes bias-related graffiti and hate crimes? Is that your bill? Yeah, that's, that's okay. one of my bills. Uh, you know, basically it would be to treat uh, you know, swastikas and, and other uh, bias-related graffitis, uh, you know, as hate crimes, not just as graffiti. Mm -hmm. And uh, we all know, you know, recent situations of, uh, you know, a rise in, uh, you know, swastika incidents as well as, uh, you know, other hate speech. Uh, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, obviously that's something that we have to take uh, seriously. It's not just, uh, you know, vandalism. It uh, it's, has dangerous consequences. Okay. Uh, but have we got a few more minutes? Not a few, a few more seconds. Seconds? Oh, okay. Is there anything that you wanted to 
tell us about that we didn't know enough to ask you yeah, about? Yeah, I, I sure. touched on the body scanners. There's a bill uh, that would uh, allow the use uh, at Rikers Island in particular or other local jails, uh, body scanners that could detect uh, ceramic weapons that are being smuggled in now uh, and causing a lot of slashing in particular at Rikers, uh, inmate on inmate as well as inmate on correction officers. And uh, these body scanners, which were used by TSA, which emit low-level radiation, which are not dangerous because regular flight uh, passengers took them, uh, was, is prohibited under New York state law because you needed medical personnel to administer them. The legislation would, re would allow correction officers to administer those body scanners uh, with supervision, with uh, training. And uh, if this bill passes, which I'm hoping it will, it already passed in the Senate, uh, I'm hoping it'll, it'll save a lot of violence and slashings uh, at Rikers, whether they be inmate on inmate uh, or inmate on correction officer. Well, best of success to you with all of this. All right, David, you're doing a great job, and we we'll always like to have your report card for every year. But um, keep up the good work and with good health. Yes. Thank you, Reverend Best Simon. of success. Thank Absolutely. you, Mark.